So we've actually been meaning to talk about pulse rifles for quite some time, especially considering the pulse rifle changes that occurred in update 6.2.5. Now, there's been a lot of different changes, including the rebalancing the effect of the handling across all pulse rifles. And essentially, things are just weighted in favor of pulse rifles with naturally higher stats. Simultaneously, though, pulse rifles with less than flattering stats, especially in that handling department, feel substantially worse. Now, we are going to be talking about pulse rifles in general pretty soon, because the likes of Peace of Mind actually got a zoom nerf. We're going to talk about how it sits high in backs, which naturally have some of the lowest handling. Felt the nerf pretty hard. And no time to explain. I actually got an individual nerf, having its recoil direction nerfed from 90 to 73, and its aim assist nerfed from 45 to 40. With that being said, though, I wanted to take today's video and actually direct us toward adaptives. Adaptives actually got a buff. They increased the precision multiplier from 1.6 to 1.65, essentially allowing the crit damage to go from 30.4 to 31.4. Now, just to name a few really popular adapters in the game we recently covered yesteryear which is a fantastic pulse rival it can also roll with desperado beautiful thing about this is previously desperado was only on high impacts but some other popular adaptives include syncopation which is a craftable weapon smite of moraine which is the king's fall raid pulse rifle which is also craftable another one that a lot of people have forgotten about which is arguably the best adaptive in the game is last perdition it is by far the furthest reaching adaptive pulse rifle in the game and then we start looking at one of our exotic adapters that being collective obligation and even though collective obligation is mainly looked at as a pve pulse rifle and believe me i love it for our pve builds we've made multiple builds with collective obligation it is quite a monster inside of pvp we also have forge's pledge which is the iron banner pulse rifle which is actually going away after this week the third axiom which is a vanguard pulse rifle which can roll the likes of surplus and considering we just talked about how handling and these weighted stats are so very important having something like surplus could be beneficial we also have the likes of gn which I mainly only use inside of PvE, Hell and Confusion, which for some reason feels like poop. Now with the change here in Adaptive's damage, this actually allows Adaptive Pulse Rifles to kill in two bursts on Guardians, three Resilience or less. Now I would argue and say that most people are sitting at three Resilience or more, especially in the sandbox, but what this does allow is pretty much any little buff, the smallest, whether it's Radiant or even small damage buffs like High Impact Reserves, that can suddenly allow your weapon to two bursts. Now granted, High Impact does require you to prime the weapon down. And for the most part, most of our adaptives have been sunset that do roll with the likes of high impact outside, of course, last perdition. I personally don't have a high impact roll in my last perdition. We actually opted for this kill clip from the planted roll for PvP, and it is a monster. However, with that being said, this is definitely a perk to be looking for on adaptive post rifles going forward. If a Dordative ever returns to us or a revamp bygones ever drops on us, especially if these weapons come back with origin traits, holy hell, fellas, you might want to try it out with high impact because a two burst with a 390 we're talking like half a second ttk value it's nasty and fast but not the easiest thing to achieve which is why for something like last perdition a role that i would be interested in would actually be firmly planted and high impact reserves together essentially allowing my weapon to have that bonus there in handling stability accuracy cone recoil control and then high impact reserves to grant me that two burst again this is just to secure that one shot kill and in theory this sounds really really good and and I know I'm not exactly using that role. I'm just using this kill clip role, which is pretty much decimating everyone. But again, Last Perdition is the only pulse rifle available currently that can roll with scopes. And these range bumps substantially throw the range of your weapon up. Take my role, for instance. It comes with the SRO 52 Ocular, which is not necessarily a scope I would recommend in most maps. But on far range maps, it is super beneficial to have. And suddenly, my pulse rifle turns into a scout rifle and I can kill people at 50.83 meters. It's disgusting. The beautiful thing about about this is at those ranges bumping this zoom up doesn't require us loading out things like rangefinder you can purely do this with the likes of our scope allowing us to dip into these other perks in that first trait column that's really really good again dig through your vaults fellas you might have a monster of a last perdition now the next post rifle i want to talk about is syncopation this is a craftable post rifle very very good but there's a couple things about syncopation that i'm very interested in and it may surprise you first up this is a Suro synergy post rifle meaning that after you reload you're granted 40 handling and 20% flinch resistance for six seconds. It's really, really nice, especially against weapons that deal increased flinch. I'm looking at you, Ace of Spades. But actually, the perk I'm most curious about here, which we're already using, is Headseeker. Now, no one's actually jumping up and saying Headseeker is meta. Not yet, at least. Mentioned that Twab on October the 6th, a question was brought up. What can be done to make Headseeker more interesting? They stated that the plan is to increase the duration that the perk is active, and then to have the perk reset on body shots when it is already active, and have an increase 
this aim assist by a very small amount. They go on to say that in play tests, it is very good. Arguably one of the best neutral perks for pulse rifles. Now, head taker has never been a perk to really go for on any weapon, but essentially body shots landed with this weapon increases precision damage for a short time. Now, this doesn't necessarily increase the likelihood of you getting the two bursts, but what it does do is definitely secure the three bursts, which at the end of the day, all of these adaptive pulse rifles, that's still 0.93 seconds and very, and I mean very forgiving, five crits to body. Depending on how substantial this change actually is, single patient with head seeker, and by the way, enhanced head seeker, which improves stability on top of its increase in precision damage, could be a play. Will it be the play? I don't know about that, but I will say single patient all on its own performs very, very well. I've got an extended barrel roll with high caliber rounds, moving target with head seeker, and I very much enjoy this weapon. I gotta say guys, Soros, they really do know how to make some pulse rifles. I was impressed with single patient, although I will say last perdition is still my top meta choice, but for what this weapon provides, you still have a pulse rifle that can reach well into the 40 meter range with a bare minimum on stats. And if you suddenly find yourself not wanting to take advantage of head seeker, by all means, roll range finder. You could also roll enhanced range finder on top of that, which improves handling. I will say though, single patient is a great choice to go for. Next, considering we're on the topic of Soros pulse rifles, we do need to talk about yesteryear. We played with yesteryear for just a second in this sandbox, and we've played with it a lot previously, and I felt like it was performing very, very well. This is the Gambit pulse rifle. Granted, my roll is still not the ideal roll. I have a Desperado roll with steady hands. I would much rather prefer perpetual motion or even heating up. Either one of those in combination with Desperado is a very nasty combination. Now, again, like we mentioned a second ago, any small buff to adapt to pulse rifles turns them into a two bursting machine. That means Rampage is on the table and you could do a Rampage heating up combo, which is very, very good for adapters now. Even with just one stack, suddenly you're able to shred through an entire team as long as you can stay alive. Now, personally, I like Desperado the most here simply because we are taking advantage of Surus Synergy or reloading is granting us that flinch resist. And considering how much we're reloading, that in combination with Desperado is a no brainer. And again, with Desperado, you get six seconds of that increase in rate of fire. Now, I will admit that the biggest selling point here for yesteryear is, of course, Desperado. It's just a unique trait. And to find it here on an adaptive pulse rifle, I think will make any of us play a couple Gambit games. However, the limiting factors here for yesteryear is actually within its range. It has a default 17 zoom. So even with the likes of high range, full bore, which you don't want, by the way, because it hurts handling and stability, you're still capped at about 37 and a half meters, which is very poor in comparison to the likes of syncopation and especially blast perdition. Again, zoom makes such a big difference on these weapons. With that being said though, within its range, I do think that yesteryear is very, very good. But again, within that range, you have to stay within that mid range in order for it to perform well for you. Now, speaking of 17 zoom pulse rifles and the adaptive frame archetype, we have collective obligation. Again, looked at more as a PVE pulse rifle as it comes with void leech with the weapon literally leeches void debuffs when damaging targets. You can also alternate its firing modes. And in this firing mode, the weapon applies void debuffs. Now we've used it in PVP. I very much enjoy it in PVP. However, I like to use it even without taking advantage of void to showcase the weapon all on its own. And guys, I gotta say, man, collective obligation, along with a lot of our other exotic pulse rifles are really good in the consistency department. Like we talked about this with like Outbreak Perfected. I've mentioned that it feels like it has like built in persistence, but Outbreak Perfected has it. Of course, no time to explain is really, really good all on its own. Again, I know it just got nerfed. We'll talk about that some more, but collective obligation is just curiously consistent. But similar to yesteryear, you are very limited here. Not only do you have 17 zoom, but you're capped at 49 range, and that is ugly. Not good. But what you do have is max recoil direction, which does lean into this weapon feeling very, very good. Granted, I completely understand why most people look at this weapon as being a PvE weapon, but I think the stats overall make this adaptive feel, in my opinion, almost like a lightweight. And I think it's consistency is very much underappreciated. Next post rifle we need to talk about is Forge's Pledge. Guys, no lie, I actually had some games that we popped off with Forge's Pledge and I want to like it. It's the Iron Banner Pulse Rifle. It has the updated Skulking Wolf origin traits where essentially while at low health, Guardian Final Blows with this weapon grant enhanced radar and remove you from the opposing radar. Its damage perks are actually really good, especially for an adaptive. You've got Rampage and Heating Up combinations. You've got Surplus Multi-Kill Clip. And again, you don't need much, not in this sandbox. With that being said though, this is another 17 zoom pulse rifle and it's recoil direction and by default is 51, which is awful. This is one of those weapons that I do suggest having arrowhead break, maybe a counterbalance mod to boot. You can roll just a counterbalance mod, but I'm just letting you know, guys, I hate the recoil direction of this weapon. Now at decent range stats, you're barely breaking over 35 meters with this weapon with arrowhead break. When the likes of maybe Hammerforge 
rifling, you'll reach up to about 37 meters or close to it. Keep in mind, not rolling arrowhead brake really makes the recoil direction on this thing feel bad. Now it's got decent ratings there on Light GG, about a four out of five stars. And again, I had games where I popped off with Forge's Pledge, but I'm just here to tell you overall, whether it's the sights on this weapon, whether it's the reticle sway that I experienced whenever just strafing with this gun, there was something about it that I just didn't like. Could be the overall lack of range, syncopation, and last perdition, both spoiled me pretty good. But Forge's Pledge just didn't feel consistent enough for me, especially considering we just talked about how good and consistent both collective obligation and yesteryear felt. I know this pulse rifle is going away, so there is some FOMO surrounding it. People are trying to get a god roll of it before it goes. Maybe this is more of a controller weapon because you can do things like Zim Moment on it. So perhaps the removal of that reticle bounce for controller inputs is super noticeable. And of course, it reduces the maximum recoil angle and weapon shake. That may actually be the play here in combination with whatever damage perks you want in that final column. My experience with it, though, is that I would just prefer other adaptive pulse rifles over Forge's Pledge. I felt like I was fighting the weapon too much. And even though we can roll things that can buff that consistency, understand it is still keeping us at about that 35 to 36 meter territory, which just doesn't feel good with the pulse rifle. Now, the last pulse rifle I want to talk about within this archetype, and I know I am missing a few here, but these were like the standout ones, was actually Third Axiom. This was the Vanguard adaptive pulse rifle. It actually has some really good rolls, including Head Seeker. And we just brought up Head Seeker getting a buff next season. It also comes with Vanguard's Vindication, and it has Surplus. And we just talked about how the stats are very important now in our pulse rifles, considering how much they're weighted. Surplus on Third Axiom, though, does make the weapon feel extremely fluid. And I actually have this surplus opening shot roll, which improves the accuracy and range on that first shot. The range on this weapon is actually pretty decent. It can go up to 40 meters. And when you roll things like range finder, you can actually go up to almost 44 meters. Granted, I think surplus is a big selling point for this weapon, just for the overall fluidity of the gun. The biggest complaint that I see with third axiom from most people is its red dot. Guys, you either like it or you hate it. Some people don't like that little bitty dot. Some people love it. I think the overall recoil direction of the weapon is not bad by the fault, although a counterbalance mod is still really, really nice. Just to kind of suck things down a little more. With that being said, though, with the Head Seeker buff coming in the future, I am curious to try Head Seeker with Third Axiom. Overall, guys, 390 Pulse Rifles are not exactly the meta, but they are very good. I think you are going to see a bigger rise in Adaptus. There's ways to drive that TTK value down. They're extremely forgiving. And if you can get a high range roll, especially one with high zoom, you suddenly find yourself with a Pulse Rifle that's both forgiving and lethal at crazy ranges. The standout ones for me, though, guys, are Last Perdition and Syncopation. And if you got either of those, pull them out, max out that range, give it a go. And if you happen to have a God Roll yesteryear, especially with Desperado, try that one out too. As far as things like Smite of Moraine or GN7, unfortunately, I still don't even have the craft roll of Smite. However, for the most part, at least my experience with Smite is that it's more of a PvE post rifle. And GN, I unfortunately kept nothing but PvE rolls for that weapon. But similar to Last Perdition, GN actually does come with scopes, although I think Last Perdition is just the better option for PvP. Love GN inside of PvE. PvP though, not so much. So guys, that is our review there for these adaptive pulse rifles in the sandbox. Let me know in the comments below what you think. We will be testing out No Time to Explain here soon, just to talk about how significant this nerf is. And of course, I think there are some pulse rifles within its archetype that will be able to fill that void. Things like New Purpose, the Messenger, of course, and then the potential of other high impacts coming in the future. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.